giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Right now, we're down to the big moment. It's time to reveal our top three uh, winning teams. So just like the finalists, the winners are based on the total points from the judging rubric, and they demonstrated real strength <laughs> in all of the different categories. Uh, the prizes for these teams is $1,000 uh, each. So we'll let Mackenzie ta- uh, kick it off, and we'll hear from each of the judges on each of the top three winners. So take it away, Mackenzie. Great. So first, we're going to start with our third place team. And so that is FTC, FTC team number 341, Miss Daisy. And I actually believe that's an FRC team. So I apologize for that. <laughs> um, so this is a Zumba robot that cleans and replenishes animal bedding in zoos to prevent the spreading of disease. So this is a really great problem, um, something super unique that we didn't see anywhere else. And it's something that really got the judges thinking. You don't really think about how um, the animals in a zoo could actually be getting COVID-19 from humans that are interacting with them. And so this robot actually goes around and will pick up the old bedding and litter and everything else in the animal's cage, put that in that first um, compartment, and then we'll be spreading new litter um, and new bedding in the robot ca- or in the um, animal cages in the zoo. And so you can see what that looks like. So they had a really great problem that they were solving, as well as a really, really great uh, mechanical design to solve that problem. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I, I thought was great about Mackenzie is that one, obviously, they kept kept things separate, both the kind of the old bedding that they're removing as well as the sort of new bedding. But I think I think what was great about it is is the dispersion of the new material with the auger design that they had. Um, you know, it's, it's enclosed, so you don't have to necessarily have to worry about people reaching into it. But the auger itself would allow for the distribution throughout. And of course, it's mechanically robust. So, you know, the idea of brushing on the front end of it, getting the used material into a separate area with that chain elevator, but then the, the dispersion with the with the uh, with that clever auger design. I thought that was uh, was very, very good. Yeah. I'd, I, and Tyler, if you go forward a, a slide, I, I there's a better picture of the auger. I thought that was really well done. An auger is actually kind of a difficult part to get like a nice natural shape for. Uh, and, and they used the helix uh, feature and, and on shape, and, and they really just did an amazing job at it. Uh, it, it came out really good. And uh, I think they used it again as well on the front for that brush, which has that nice kind of V shape to it to help the material get picked up. So really great modeling on their parts. I mean, that was it was modeled really efficiently. Like the auger, I think, is like eight features total. Uh, to to make a part like that that has the ratchets on the end too so uh, amazing modeling work in addition to a, a really cool assembly yeah i think also with this design it's um it's a very very robust design it's a very uh, uh it's an industrial design it's it's uh it's a powerful machine so so uh um it really has to carry a lot of weight and that's a hard that's a hard thing to design for yeah, and you can also see the details that they really went to with that design. If you go forward one more, um, they even included all the rivets on the design. So you can actually see that they went through the painstaking task of going through and adding those different pieces to the model to really make sure when you look at their bill of materials and what that robot would actually need to complete, they had all of those parts that they would need on it. And thank God they didn't put those friendly eyes in the front of it. Otherwise, the animals <laughs> might attack it. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, congratulations, Miss Daisy, for third place. Uh, we'll move on now to second place. And let's see, uh, Mark, you want to kick it off for us? Yeah. So in second place here, we have FTC of 2901, uh, Purple Gear. So they built a mover which is uh, a a robot that can be controlled via phone app and travel to different parts of a medical facility to decontaminate equipment. Uh, So super complicated robot. Uh, They really did an amazing job. If you don't know, 2901 manages the FTC kit of parts. Uh, Us at PTC can't take credit for it. They created it and they manage it along with a lot of help from the community. And I think they used every single part from (laughs) on this robot. Uh, It is so detailed. Uh, you can see absolutely everything in it. If you've used that kit of parts, you know that the bomb materials end up being super correct. Like you can just open up the bomb on this model, 
printed out. There's a link to every place to buy the part. Uh, you could buy all the parts, and then I'm sure you could just assemble the whole thing just looking at the model and never talking to 2901. So amazing job. I mean, that's why we do CAD, uh, to, to give that level of detail to a model. So amazing job there. You know, what, what, what caught my attention as I looked at this design, besides the fact that it's a great design and there's a lot of detail, is in part of the write-up, they talked about how they, they, they before they actually even started doing design, they, they talked to some of their advisors who were manufacturing experts, but they also sort of talked to the end user, if you will. They kind of went and tried to understand the problem a little closer to, to hand. So they spent time interviewing doctors to try and understand what it meant from a sterilization standpoint process. So, you know, good design starts with understanding the problem and understanding the problem well. And, uh, and part of the way of doing that, of course, is, is not only through discussions with, with the potential users, but through observation. So to me, that carries from the early concept through into the product. So I, I, I thought uh, I was very impressed by that. Great. Congratulations to Purple Gears for the mover robot in second place. Uh, now we'll move on to first place, our first place winner. And Johnny will introduce that for us. Well, I have the pleasure of doing this. This is really quite an amazing, uh, amazing project that they started on in concept and design. And that is team, it's called R Factor from FRC number 6024. And this is a robot, it's called the Asphalt 10 Street Sense. It's a robot to, designed to identify and repair potholes on roads in real time. You know, we're, we're from Massachusetts and uh, <laughs> we have lots of potholes. So this was designed for India, but, uh, but we would like it here in Boston. But you know, some, I love the fact that they shared some really important information. In the last three years alone in, in India, there was 9,600 deaths that were attributed to potholes alone, 25,000 injuries over the past three years. In the U.S., they estimate that for potholes alone, there's, there's literally $3 billion spent, both for repair as well as sort of the damage that gets done to vehicles, et cetera. So we've all experienced, or anybody who's not from down south, has experienced uh, sort of the frustration of potholes. But what this design has done is very clever. It allows basically to carry up to 40 gallons of sort of cold um, asphalt mix and basically go over a pothole and be able to, to fill that pothole. I mean, my, my colleagues will share some of the, the details, um, but I will say this. They'll give you some of the details, but I think I have the best name for this thing. I think you guys should call this the Pothole Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I love this uh, this robot. I mean, they, they did such a good job. I, I've actually been fortunate enough to go to Mumbai quite a few times, uh, you know, where this team is from. And, I you know, I love it there. Uh, I love just driving around and how much traffic and energy there is all around. And uh, it's definitely something that I'm sure would be, be useful over there. And I think this design is super practical. Uh, like, it's... It, it does the job that it needs to be done. They talked a lot about the base pan at the bottom of this and how they designed it originally. And then they realized how much asphalt actually weighs. It's, it's quite a, a heavy material. And they redesigned that base pan and, and went through design iterations based off of that information and, and really had to optimize around what was you know a major consideration for them. So I love that they did that. They, can, they, they showed the revisions of the pan uh, in their write-up. So really good job uh, by them on that. Yeah, the other big thing is is the documentation was just fantastic. It was like another level. Um, there was some great documentation, and it just goes to show you there's a lot of part of doing uh, uh, engineering and manufacturing. They did all of the uh, bill of materials. They did all of the costing, uh, manufacturing instructions. Uh, it, it it was really a beautiful, beautiful job. Um, and you really feel like this is this this is this is professional work that's ready ready to go out there. This is going to be a very busy robot for those of us who have been to Mumbai. There's uh, there's a <laughs> lot of roads, and and uh, I'm not sure it's going to be able to find any any room on the street to get over the pothole. But but uh, um, but one thing you know is if it's in the road, people will find a way around it because because in Mumbai everything just keeps moving no matter what's going on. What they need to do, I think, Rev Two. Here's a Rev Two idea for for, for the team there, which is. Take your take your iPhone and connect it with the GPS so that people can report where the pothole should be. Connect it to this machine so it can go there to actually fill it. So that's a rev two. That's an enhancement request. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be giving one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, Dave. Instead of rece request receiving them, it's nice to be giving one. <laughs> congratulations, though. Amazing design. Yeah, congratulations. I uh, 
several years ago uh, had to replace all four tires after hitting one pothole. So I wish this had been around back then. That would have been super helpful. Uh, yeah, congratulations to all of our top three winners and really to all participants. Great job for your hard work over the past several weeks um, for taking on this challenge, you know, in the midst of everything that was going on, uh, lots of changes. We were excited to see so many of you sign up and participate and submit. Um, we'll all watch with anticipation to see when your products go to market. The Robots to the Rescue Challenge on First Updates Now is brought to you by PTC. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan.